Just what an absolutely amazing weekend. We were two for two on nice days, Saturday as well as Sunday. Both days were sunny with temperatures in the 50s. In terms of this week, it's really kind of hard to pick one or two days that are really good. But if you're a positive thinker like me, you'll think of something to uh, look forward to in terms of our weather. Fleetwood Mac. It is. Yeah. First off, beautiful song. Second off, that's not true. You know, thunder doesn't always happen when it's raining. Uh. But beautiful song. I know at some point I could deliver a nice weekend forecast, and I finally did it, so you're welcome. So uh, what that will mean for the trash can wind meter, basically it could be tipped over in some spots. So not exactly the windiest of days. You know, the glasses are going to be so important for that because... I don't um, get to be your glasses model. Oh, the, <laughs> these ones are a little bit smaller than the ones I had on earlier, but, uh, but yeah. I got a big head. But yeah, um, these are going to be important for viewing the corona as well as some of the other extra features that you're not going to be able to see with a 93% like in Champagne. Not only are we trying to forecast something days out in advance, we're also having, having to forecast something days out in advance while looking through systems. So every single time we have to look at a system, the one following that is just more fuzzy, not as clear. But it's been very soupy today with all the cloud cover and the fog and the mist. And now we have a little bit of some light rain showers too. But our heavier showers and even the storms that we anticipate after midnight tonight still remain off to our west. And that will make for a cold drive to work or to school for tomorrow. So single digits are expected with generally partly cloudy skies in the commute forecast for tomorrow. Once you are coming back uh, home from work in the evening, you'll be noticing that uh, skies will probably still remain pretty cloudy and our temperatures will be into the probably the middle 20s there. And it looks like on your screen there, I see some snowflakes flying around. What do you got there, buddy? That's right, Kevin. Yeah, we um, had the at the top of the six o'clock show when we started that off. It was coming down at a pretty decent clip, and then as you've been kind of waiting around for this hit now, you've been noticing the snow kind of tapering off a little bit. What can drivers expect as they head out the doors, Jack? Hey, Christy. I am in uh, downtown Danville right now, and. Um, Roads here compared to Champaign, a huge 180 degree difference. They are completely snow covered with um, packed down snow. It's also blowing too. It takes about six inches of moving water to move a person and about 12 inches to move a car. That's so why we continue to stress, turn around, don't drown if you come across a road that is completely covered. As little as two feet of moving water can move a truck. You also don't know what's underneath the surface of the water as well. The road could be washed out. That's why you do not want to drive around barricades. Even if you're walking through it, which you don't advise, because there could be contaminants like sewage and other debris in there that could hurt you, as little as six inches of moving water can knock you over, even a bigger guy like me. So that's why you need to be safe around floodwaters. You're noticing uh, varying intensities of snow moving through central Illinois, but where there is snow on the radar that typically is falling as snow in those locations, there could be some spots later on tonight where we change over briefly to some rain, but that's going to be a very small chance. We're basically dealing with all snow with this system because of the fact that our temperatures have now fallen below 32 in many locations. So you'll see those rounds on future track right now. Round number one working its way through the area tonight. Then we have round number two coming into play here for Monday. Like I said, it'll be the afternoon into the evening tapering off Monday night where we can see those accumulations. Then we have round three and this is the one that we've been kind of eyeing here for the past couple days. That one's got the potential to be a bigger system. The issue that we've seen now recently is that the track is actually farther to the south and so that would uh, limit more of the snow in our area. The most disliked man in uh, Champaign County reporting for duty right now, giving you your forecast. Now, good news is, at least, we have our winter weather advisory uh, beginning to be trimmed. So as snow is coming to an end, we don't have as many counties under it anymore. It still remains, though, until 1 in the morning. However, I think that we're going to be seeing this all canceled before that's done because the, the snow is moving out of here very quickly. As you're noticing on Storm Tracker, it's all basically now to the east of I-57 and it's just after 1020. So expect the snow to be out of here by around 11 o'clock or so is what we're thinking. And as, so as we go through future track uh, accumulations, the rest of the night are going to be basically non-existent. The snow is wrapping up. Here's one o'clock. It's done really by around 11 o'clock. I think it's going to be completely done across central Illinois. And now central Illinois most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Kerfin.
Okay, so we have some good news and some bad news with the forecast. We'll start with the bad news is because we want to get that over the way with first. Plus, it's also the nearest thing coming too. We have accumulating snow in the forecast tomorrow night into Monday morning. This is now the third weekend in a row with accumulating snow uh, in our area, and no one wants to see this. The good news is is that it isn't much, only an inch to two inches in the teal zone there, a dusting to an inch in the white, and it'll be melting like we've been noticing these past couple times. Uh, they'll be melting very quickly, so that's good news but the good news is the real good news look at these temperatures that we go to by the middle of the week we're starting off our work week in the lower 40s by Tuesday we're at 48 Wednesday 60 degrees a nice uh, 69 on Thursday there and then we have a high temperature of 70 on Friday so a actual really warm forecast is shaping up for us we just had to get through the speed bump that is tomorrow night into Monday's snowfall event storm tracker Doppler remains very quiet and also very clear too zooming way out you'll notice that our next system is still off in the Rockies and four corners region there uh, but that's one of these little clipper systems that'll be coming through as typically the case normally when it should be happening in November, January, uh, December, if I missed the month the order there, but uh, really what it's going to be doing is not providing us with a lot of snow, and so that's what we have going for us uh, for tomorrow night. Temperatures right now are still ranging in the upper 30s and lower 40s with our winds that have been out of the northwest up to around 15 miles per hour. That's not really going to change overnight tonight, but we stay clear. We're going to be cold. We'll drop down to a low of 21. Our average low temperature should be around 38, so we are close to 20 degrees colder than where we should be overnight and then 42 for the day tomorrow so pretty similar in terms of temperatures to today but we will have more clouds coming into the area later on in the day there will be snow later on too with southeast winds at around two to five miles per hour and again like i said our average high temperature should be 60 so we're close to 20 degrees below normal there for our highs as well but for the rest of the evening you're noticing that our skies will remain clear all the way into or into sunday morning once you go into sunday afternoon though you'll notice the clouds coming into the area and then here's the snow generally going to be coming in here right around uh, six o'clock and afterwards and it will then be coming in from the northwest pushing to the southeast continuing sunday night into Monday morning as you're noticing there and it still kind of lingers more for our northwestern areas by earlier Monday morning it'll eventually change over to rain here as you're noticing um, so because of that that's why we have that accumulating snow so from Sunday night until Monday morning is when we expect those uh, chances for snow to be there then with the warmer temperatures does come a bigger system here so you're noticing our system that'll bring the snow scooting out of here maybe another chance for some rain showers as you're noticing for uh, late Wednesday night early Thursday morning, but a more robust system comes in at the end of the forecast here as you're seeing with uh, possibility for some showers and storms. So it is a better seven day forecast as you're noticing a lot better. Problem is it still remains pretty active. So we still have snow to talk about as well as storms all in the same seven day. Can we not? The snow, I mean, we have to get through the snow, but I mean, the lights at the end of the tunnel. Do you see that? There's uh, a 70. Fix, There's yeah. a 70. I'll hold on to that. So I've been redeemed. All right. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. How do we go from this to this? But again, this is mainly kind of what we're looking at with this line of storm. And how long does this take? There are a variety of ways to receive severe weather alerts, whether from us on TV, your cell phones, or other devices as well. But all of those alerts come from one place, the National Weather Service. I sat down with Chris Miller, the warning coordination meteorologist at the National Weather Service office in Lincoln, to describe not only the process, but also how quickly it is done as well. The 23 staff members in Lincoln use a variety of tools to forecast and track weather for 35 counties, but none is more important than the radar. During times of severe weather, we can have a new radar image in 70 seconds, and it isn't just where the storm is at. We can look at the movement in the storm. That's the best part of the Doppler radar is showing are things moving toward us, away from us? Is there any rotation? And uh, if so, approximately, you know, what is the speed of that rotation, but also, is there any debris that's being kicked up if the tornado's already uh, ha has formed? In addition to radar, trained storm spotters can also relay information back to the National Weather Service that can be used to issue a warning, back up an already existing warning, or update that warning, and that can be done in about a minute. But how was that warning created? Well, with a program called AWIPS, or Advanced Weather Interacting Processing System, all it takes is a few clicks of the mouse and some keystrokes on the keyboard. There are some areas here that are hatched that it's going to show me that that's where the warning will be issued. 
So then I can go in here and I can say, we'll say that uh, train spotters have reported 80 mile per hour winds and uh, quarter sized hail. We would just click send and the warning would go out. And all that is done in about one minute. Through the advancement of technology, communication, as well as meteorological expertise, the National Weather Service can quickly as well as efficiently give updates as well as issue warnings in a timely manner so that you have more time to get you and your family to safety.